July 10th. Dear Jesus, thank you for time with friends, those special times that you give us, and the blessings that come from that when we talk and we share and we pour into each other's lives and the things that you're doing in our lives. I thank you for the deep rewards that there are in that and the way that you've set that up. I pray that you would guide my time today as I read, that you would give me wisdom, discernment, understanding, and all the things that I need in my life to become more like you. Jesus, in your name I pray. Amen. First Chronicles 9-1 through 10-14 so all Israel was recorded by genealogies, and indeed, they were inscribed in the book of the kings of Israel. But Judah was carried away captive to Babylon because of their unfaithfulness. And the first inhabitants who dwelt in their possessions, in their cities, were Israelites, priests, Levites, and the Nethanim. Now in Jerusalem, the children of Judah dwelt and some of the children of Benjamin, and of the children of Ephraim and Manasseh, Uthai, the son of Amahud, the son of Omri, the son of Imri, the son of Bani, of the descendants of Perez, the son of Judah. Of the Shilonites, Asaiah, the firstborn, and his sons, of the sons of Zerah, Jeuel, and their brethren, six hundred and ninety. Of the sons of Benjamin, Salu, the son of Meshulam, the son of Hodavia, the son of Hasanua, Ibnia, the son of Jeroham, Ela, the son of Uzi, the son of Mikri, Meshulam, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Ruel, the son of Ibnijah, and their brethren according to their generations. 956. All these men were heads of a father's house in their father's houses. Of the priests, Jediah, Jehoiarib, and Jachin. Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok, the son of Meriaoth, the son of Ahitub, the officer over the house of God. Adaiah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Pashur, the son of Malkaija, Maasei, the son of Adiel, the son of Jazira, the son of Meshulam, the son of Meshilamith, the son of Immer, and their brethren, heads of their fathers' houses, 1,760. They were very able men for the work of the service of the house of God. Of the Levites, Shemaiah, the son of Hashub, the son of Azrakam, the son of Hashabiah, the sons of Merari, Bakbakar, Heresh, Galal, and Mataniah, the son of Micah, the son of Zikri, the son of Asaph, Obadiah, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Galal, the son of Jedithun, and Barakiah, the son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, who lived in the villages of the Netophathites. And the gatekeepers were Shalem, Achab, Talman, Ahiman, and their brethren. Shalem was the chief. Until then they had been gatekeepers for the camps of the children of Levi at the king's gate on the east. Shalem, the son of Kor, the son of Abiasaph, the son of Korah, and his brethren from his father's house. The Korahites were in charge of the work of the service, gatekeepers of the tabernacle. Their fathers had been keepers of the entrance to the camp of the Lord. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar, had been the officer over them in time past. The Lord was with him. Zechariah, the son of Meshelamiah, was keeper of the door of the tabernacle of meeting. All those chosen as gatekeepers were two hundred and twelve, 
They were recorded by their genealogy in their villages. David and Samuel the seer had appointed them to their trusted office. So they and their children were in charge of the gates of the house of the Lord, the house of the tabernacle, by assignment. The gatekeepers were assigned to the four directions, the east, west, north, and south, and their brethren in their villages had to come with them from time to time for seven days. For in this trusted office were four chief gatekeepers. They were Levites, and they had charge over the chambers and treasuries of the house of God. And they lodged all around the house of God because they had the responsibility and they were in charge of opening it every morning. Now some of them were in charge of the serving vessels, for they brought the men and took them out by count. Some of them were appointed over the furnishings and over all the implements of the sanctuary and over the fine flour and the wine and the oil and the incense and the spices. And some of the sons of the priests made the ointment of the spices. Mattathiah of the Levites, the firstborn of Shalem, the Korahite, had the trusted office over the things that were baked in the pans. And some of their brethren of the sons of the Kohathites were in charge of preparing the showbread for every Sabbath. These are the singers, heads of the fathers' houses of the Levites, who lodged in the chambers and were free from other duties, for they were employed in that work day and night. These heads of the fathers' houses of the Levites were heads throughout their generations. They dwelt at Jerusalem. Jael, the father of Gibeon, whose wife's name was Ma'akah, dwelt at Gibeon. His firstborn was Abdon, then Zer, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth. And Mikloth begot Shimeam. They also dwelt alongside their relatives in Jerusalem with their brethren. Ner begot Kish, Kish begot Saul, and Saul begot Jonathan, Malkishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. The son of Jonathan was Merib Baal, and Merib Baal begot Micah. The sons of Micah were Python, Melech, Taria, and Ahaz. And Ahaz begot Jara, Jara begot Alameth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. And Zimri begot Moza. Moza begot Binia, Rephaiah, his son, Eliasa, his son, and Azel, his son. And Azel had six sons whose names were these, Azrakem, Bocheru, Ishmael, Sheariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. Then the Philistines followed hard after Saul and his sons. And the Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua, Saul's sons. The battle became fierce against Saul. The archers hit him, and he was wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore... Saul took a sword and fell on it. And when his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died. So Saul and his three sons died, and all his house died together. And when all the men of Israel who were in the valley saw that they had fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook their cities and fled. Then the Philistines came and dwelt in them. So it happened the next day, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. And they stripped him, and took his head and his armor, and sent word throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim the news in the temple of their idols and among the people. Then they put his armor in the temple of their gods, 
and fastened his head in the temple of Dagon. And when all Jabesh Gilead heard all that the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons, and they brought them to Jabesh and buried their bones under the tamarisk tree at Jabesh and fasted seven days. So Saul died for his unfaithfulness, which he had committed against the Lord, because he did not keep the word of the Lord, and also because he consulted a medium for guidance. But he did not inquire of the Lord. Therefore he killed him, and turned the kingdom over to David, the son of Jesse. Acts 27, 21-44 but after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me, and not have sailed from Crete, and incurred this disaster and loss. Now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore take heart, men, for I believe God, that it will be just as it was told me. However, we must run aground on a certain island. Now when the fourteenth night had come, as we were driven up and down the Adriatic Sea, about midnight the sailors sensed that they were drawing near some land, and they took soundings and found it to be twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little farther, they took soundings again and found it to be fifteen fathoms. Then, fearing lest we should run aground on the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. And as the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship, when they had let down the skiff into the sea, under the pretense of putting out anchors from the prow, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the skiff and let it fall off. And as day was about to dawn, Paul implored them all to take food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day you have waited and continued without food and eaten nothing. Therefore I urge you to take nourishment, for this is for your survival, since not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. And when he had said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all, and when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then they were all encouraged and also took food themselves. And in all, we were two hundred and seventy-six persons on the ship. So when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and threw out the wheat into the sea. When it was day, they did not recognize the land, but they observed a bay with a beach, onto which they planned to run the ship if possible. And they let go the anchors and left them in the sea, meanwhile loosing the rudder ropes, and they hoisted the mainsail to the wind and made for shore. But striking a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground. And the prow stuck fast and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the violence of the waves. And the soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim away and escape. But the centurion, wanting to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that those who could swim should jump overboard first and get to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on parts of the ship. And so it was that they all escaped safely to land. Psalm 8, 1-9 to the chief musician, on the instrument of Gath, a psalm of David. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength 
because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Proverbs eighteen twenty three through 24 The poor man uses entreaties, but the rich answers roughly. A man who has friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Thank you for joining me as we read Scripture for Life.